Am I emotionally stable enough to listen to Ed Sheeran's new album Subtract? Probably not. Am I ever emotionally stable? Absolutely not. However, I have been waiting for this album for years. I feel like since he released Plus, which is one of my favourite albums of all time, I've waited for a an album that matches its emotions and its like lyrical superiority. Like I went to, I was lucky enough to go and see Ed Sheeran at the O2 a few weeks ago, and he started the set with "Give Me Love," and um, I immediately started crying. <laughs> uh, so this album is guaranteed to ruin my life, wreck my day. So I thought we'd play a little game. The game is I'm not allowed to cry. Okay, and my challenge to myself is not to cry. And I'm gonna see how many songs I get through before I cry. Even like a tear. One tear appears in one of my eyes and I've lost. So song number one is called Boat. The first time I listened to this, I cried. So I'm, I'm feeling good about the fact that I'm not allowed to cry during this video. <laughs> okay, here we go. Came in for the embers. Elements to remind me there's beauty when it's bleak The more that I love The less that I feel Never were real They say that all scars Heal but I know Maybe I won't But the brain My book <sighs> That, his voice, I love his voice so much like, my, okay. <laughs> why did I try and do it? Why did I even try? Um, <laughs> yeah. I love the strings. I love the strings on this. It's just so beautiful. Ah! When he says, they say that all scars will heal, but I know maybe I won't. It's such a, like, mature way of looking at it. It's like the catharsis has happened, do you know what I mean? It's very much a healing um, song. And then the waves won't break my boat. Like, it, it's quite a um, quite a positive kind of, you know, I've got this kind of vibe, which I do not think is going to flow through the rest of the album. But, like, he's starting it on a bit of a, like, uh, optimistic... Um, feel and angle, and it's just going to go downhill from here, is what I, what I think. So, um, let's see if I'm right. <laughs> I love that bit so much. <laughs> what I love about Ed Sheeran as well, especially with like Plus and with what I'm hearing on this, what I've heard from this album so far, the two songs. Um, it's like he was influenced heavily by folk and he said that like he even when on the album give me love um after the song ends there's like a silence and then he sings the parting glass which is a folk song and he sang it live when i saw him last he sang it live the first time i saw him like he's he's kind of rooted in folk and his voice has such a folky kind of sound to it so when he does these like riffs almost and he does the high bits ah oh, it's just like where he should be, do you know what I mean? It's like his voice is, is home. That's what it feels like to me. Not the pop stuff that he did before, like all the, the shape of you and that kind of um, bad habits and whatever that I'm not, I never really enjoyed it that much because I just knew what Ed Sheeran could do and how much I'd love it. And this is what I love. Ah! Right, so track two is called Saltwater. I'm assuming that that's a metaphor for tears, which is probably what's going to come out of my eyes. I feel like I'm already at an emotional level where crying is just inevitable. But we're gonna we're gonna try. Right, salt water track two. It's still so far to go. Near the blades are two feet tall. The way moving forward to where <gasps> God only knows. I just I'm so excited. I'm so excited. His voice, his voice, little like inflictions is so Oh, it's so folky and ah. Feel the wind's harsh refrain. Oh, and when it's time to go, it's in my long scream, it's over love. Water. Ooh. Water. Oh, these harmonies as well. Yes. Oh, 
Ah, those drums. Trying so hard not to cry. <laughs> so much. Oh, this is so pretty. I love this. That nearly got me. It did. I love that song so much. Can we just say, I literally want to play it again. In fact, I might. I might just put it on repeat for a couple of times. Um, that's, that's, the, that's it. That's exactly what I wanted. That's exactly what I expected. And I'm so excited. Ugh, if I wasn't trying so hard not to, I'd have been blubbing then. This is, I mean, it's track two. We're not going to do very well, are we? Eyes Closed is next, which I love and I've heard a lot, but I'm still going to listen to it. I want the album in its entirety, so let's go. That line gets me every single time. Every song reminds me you're gone. Literally gets me every time. <laughs> Uh, come on, Dan. Stay strong. That is a certified sad bop. Do you know what I mean? And I feel like it might be the only time in the album where I actually want to like little have a little boogie. I love that. I saw him play this live. Um, and it's so good. I, it's so good. I feel like it was the right kind of track to release as the lead single. Um, because it's like a little transition from his, the stuff that he's most recently done to this new album, which I'm falling so in love with so quickly. Ah! Track four is called Life Goes On. That little, I suppose. Ugh. Ugh. Easy come, hard go. Then life goes on. There's a lot of, like, um, water <laughs> imagery in, in this album so far. Obviously, boat and salt water, and now this as well with the waves. And it is, isn't it? It's healing. Like, even when you do, like, um, meditation and relaxation therapy, they talk about the waves crashing and it's like a peaceful place of serenity. So a lot of time when you watch films, people are grieving, they normally go to this sea or they go, you know, to a body of water to have that moment when they stare out at, this, at the water. And I'm getting a lot of that. So um, I don't know what that means. I don't know why I'm, I'm even talking about it, but it feels relevant. Okay. <laughs> Really? Oh, his voice is so powerful. I'm not sure if I'm going to allow myself that or not, but I did, like, oh man, that, I love that, first of all, like, his voice, it reminds me of, like, the Give Me Loves of his, like, discography. These lyrics, I don't know, this album's, like, laced with just pain, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Like, these pure moments of pain, and you can feel it, you can feel it in the lyrics, you can hear it in his voice, like, ah. I can't do with this. 
<laughs> I'm not gonna survive this. I'm not gonna survive. I'm only on track four. <laughs> track five is called Dusty. Like your mum. <laughs> I don't even know. What does that tell you? Nothing. Let's just find out. I wasn't expecting that. Right. Kind of love it. Ah, oh, yes. There's so much going on, I love it. I love it all. I that I feel like that's gonna grow on me. Like I loved I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I thought it was fun. Like I feel like it's a, the kind of song that, you know, when you listen to it, like, in a few weeks' time, when I revisit everything, and I'll be like, that might be the best song on the album. Right? There's a lyric in it, Drop a Needle on Dusty. I'm trying to think of what that means, and the only thing I can think of is playing Dusty Springfield on a record player. So they'd put the need, drop the needle on Dusty. Is that, could, is that it? I'm going to go with that. I'm going to go with that. They're playing Dusty Springfield on a record player. And if I'm wrong, I don't care. <laughs> track six is called End of Youth, and I'm not going to lie. When I was looking through the track list from this album when it was first like released, End of Youth and Borderline were the two songs that I was like, I think I'm going to love those two. Like, you know, you just get a feeling from... Um, from seeing song names and sometimes you're completely wrong and this time I'm hoping I'm right um but end of youth and I think this song might break me I can just tell you know I can just tell right do not cry do not cry I've been depressed since you left tried to fill the hole with wine stop the drugs you can't tell me through the fall if we don't know if I can land try to be world how to process but don't take the same advice I remember what I say then it's been a long year and we're not even halfway there is this the end? I just don't know if I Well, I've lost the challenge. Are you joking me? What did he just say? We spend our youth with eyes and hearts wide open and in the dark says. To fall, to live, to try and do in my life Just a boy at the start I feel like this is, I can't I can't listen to this They lent on like a man You were meant to be my friend And not to take all that you can To see what I just give you what I feel If I slip and we're not even halfway there Is this What are you trying to do to me, Ed Sheeran? That line, oh, it killed me. Oh my God, what was that? What was that? We spend our youth with eyes and arms wide open and the dark gets in, and that's the end of youth. Are you joking me? I need a break. I need a break. Well, I think I lost. I think I lost my challenge. Uh, my not not cry challenge. And uh, let's change it. How many times am I going to cry during this album? Okay, track seven's called Colorblind. I'm just dreading hit and play at this point because I don't know what to expect. 
Oh, I love this. Oh, I love this. This is so nice. It's like a little lullaby in the background, like the do do do. Do you know what I mean? I love this. Like, I love the imagery and, like, how it's, like, love in layers. Do you know what I mean? That's what it feels like. It feels like he's explaining the different layers of love and using colour to do it. And, like, ah, oh, this is... This is nice. Pick an orange. She did. She chose you, mate. <laughs> oh, I love that. I love that bit. I know it says rainbow exploding, right? I know it's like a rainbow exploding of all the different colours of love. All I can hear is rainbow exploring. <laughs> I'm like, is Ed Sheeran trying to tell us something? <laughs> Oh, it's so nice. That was like a warm hug around my heart. I love that. You know how like thinking about thinking out loud is everyone's wedding song? I feel like Colorblind is gonna replace Thinking Out Loud as everyone's wedding song. That was so nice. Ah Right, track eight is called Curtains. When you pull the curtains, let me see the sunshine. All right, I wasn't expecting the optimism. I'm enjoying the optimism. This is good. This is good. Starting to worry about you there for a minute, Ed. <laughs> oh, yes. What? Yes. 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 I love it when he has his little like M and M moment. He's like more like a skittle because he's sweet, isn't he? This is like you know when you're really depressed and you just lay in bed for days and weeks on end and you don't want to see anyone or do anything, and then one day you just get up and you open the curtains and it's like, right, deep breath, we can do this. Everything about it though, not just the lyrics, like it's the. The, everything about this song. Yes, guitar solo. You know what I love about Ed Sheeran, and that song kind of like solidifies it, is that he's so self aware. So he's. I feel like he's like, yeah, I've been through shit and I've been really depressed and I've had this really hard time. But then he's also like, you know, I know that it could be worse. And we know what's happened as well because he's talked about it. He's got a documentary. Like, we know what's happened with his wife and with um, Jamal Edwards. Like, we know how shit of a time he's had. And um, he's just so likeable, isn't he? Like, do you know what I mean? I just love I love him. I don't understand why people don't love him. I genuinely think if he was conventionally attractive, if he wasn't ginger, I don't even know. But if he was like a beautiful man and everything was this else was the same, his voice, his talent, his being, his soul, how he is, I think he would be like the most lo loved man on the planet. I genuinely believe that. Not that he's unattractive, I mean, I would. The next song on the album is called Borderline. Um which is one of the ones I've been most excited for, for no reason other than the song title. So, let's give it a go. Sadness always finds an end. It does. Every chapter has an end. Birds they fly, like 
like a frown on the skyline. Okay, full set day. <laughs> I feel like I'm I feel like I've zoned out for a full minute and questioned my entire life. I oh, just So I will pause nothing good will ever come from worrying. Nothing good will ever come from worrying. Isn't that true? We all know that, don't we? We all know that. And yet, why can none of us apply it to our life? Like we worry and stress about things, and yet we all know it's pointless and it's a waste of time. Right now. Oh, there's strings on this as well. Uh man. I've still got quite a few songs to go and I, I, I genuinely don't think I can actually emotionally survive it. <laughs> I'm doing very well at not crying though. Track 10 is called Spark. We've been lost for a long time In a rut, no escape signs Comes a lot like a band They hold a deeper cause we try I love that in the background, that like sliding sound. Almost sounds like a firework. I don't know if you can hear it. I don't know if it's accurate, I don't care. I thought like it was another one where it's like, you know, if shit happens, you've got to move on. And yeah, it's hard, but you know, you've got to move on and just hope for better. So I, I like that. I like that. So track 11 is called Vega, which I don't know what means. I feel like I could be Googling stuff, right? And getting and like finding out what actually the meanings of these songs are. But when I first listen to music, I like to draw my own meaning from it. And then I will like look up later on, like what the artist says and see if it's like similar or different. Because I feel like music everything in art is like personal to the person who's consuming it so i don't want to be told how to feel when i first listen to a song i want to just feel what i feel do you know what i mean so vega no idea rain keeps beating on the rooftop muddying the glass but then into vinyl trying to ignore the weather fighting the tide of the waves they will part so he's talking about the ocean again and the waves parting, see? Light up the night, we were trying to keep it all together. One door closes, so we'll believe and she'll get better. Okay, so I'm guessing this song is about his wife, because he just said she'll get better. Ugh. The days are long, but they pass within an instant bay. Not again, this war we've got to win. So I'm going to guess that Vega is like a star and he's comparing himself to a star as in like it burns like hell being Vega. So like he's saying that being a star is painful and hurts because like obviously of all the stuff that comes with being famous when you're battling very personal things. That's what I'm taking from this. I 
guess this is human nature to be vaguer. Ooh, that was heavy. I felt like that was heavy. That's so good though. This album is so good, isn't it? Like it's literally, it reminds me so much of Plus, but like more mature. And where in Plus he was singing a lot about growing up and like going from teenager to adult and all the experience of that, um, of growing up and getting famous. This is like, the other side of that where he is famous and is struggling with famous struggling with life going from your late 20s to your 30s which is quite something let me tell you um and then dealing with all of the pain that he's endured ah oh, it's just i feel like i'm getting to know ed sheeran by listening to this album i want to give the man a hug right we're on to track 12 which is sycamore sycamore in the summer Like, there's just so many, like, little pretty sounds to this album. Does that make sense? Like, the, just the music in it just all seems like, like, a lot of it's quite light and, I don't know, fairy-like and just pretty and delicate and intricate in the background, and I love that. Just imagine a world where we could be Now in the waiting room, emotions running wild Worry about my... Ugh. This is so, ah, uh, so he's wait in the waiting room and I'm like, right, I need to prepare myself. Ugh. Lost the challenge again. Oh man, I'm not gonna lie, some of it's hitting a bit close to home. Uh, I just felt it was very honest. Do you know what I mean? It was very honest. Like, you can tell that this album's autobiographical as opposed to, like, you know, Taylor Swift folklore. And she was like, oh, I've written this about... I want to write, write like, fictional people and I want to write fictional stories because all my music is about me. You can tell that this is the opposite of that. Do you know what I mean? Ah! So track 13 is called No Strings. So I'm guessing this is about Pinocchio. <laughs> Right, no strings. If we make it through this year, then nothing can break us. Ah. We tear our hair out and overthink it, and that won't change when there's no string. Jesus. Is this what's in this song to make me do this? I just, it's just like a stunning way to put it. It's a beautiful way to put it. This is no strings, this is who you are, who I love. And it's just growing pains. It's just growing pains. Like, you know. Man, like, I don't even feel like it's particularly that sad, but it's just so, I can't talk about it. <laughs> okay, so the last song on the standard version is The Hills of Aberfeldy. Oh, the leaves are covered in snow. 
Oh, it's the folk. I, I'm going to start it again, but I had to stop. I just love, I love it when he does folky stuff. <laughs> oh, leaves are covered in the snow and warm me down to my bones as you lay beside me home and the sun grows cold beholding somebody else is close the hills of Aberfeldy oh, I love his voice Ah, yes! And the sun beats strong. Our harmonies. And I feel like my feet fall soon. Yes. Yet I... ah. Oh my god, I want to dance. I love this. Another stranger to share in the world of mine. Oh. Oh, that was so nice. I do feel like that was a perfect song to end this album because it's like, it goes back to his folky and Irish roots. And that was phenomenal. Oh my God. Like, talk about putting you through an emotional to ringer like i literally feel like i need to go and lay in a ball and cry and drink wine and recover because it was so beautiful so emotional but like not in like an exploitative way i don't feel like i've been exploited for my tears do you know what i mean i feel like he's welcomed me in to his life and his struggles and do you know what this is this is therapy <laughs> What an incredible album, really. I can't, like, if I was to choose a favourite song, I don't even know. Like, Salt Water Life Goes On, End of Youth, Colourblind, I loved Colourblind, Spark, Vega, On the Hills of Alpha. They were all so good. They were all so good. It was so... That's just stunning. Like, songwriting at its best. I'm going to go and um, listen to this on repeat for the rest of the day. So um, let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know what your favourite song is. And um, how did you get on with the with crying? When did you first cry? Because I feel like I did better than I expected, even though I cried very early on. Uh, track six. Um, but I could have cried in track two if I wasn't trying so hard not to. Ed Sheeran, man. I just love him. I love him so much. Um, and he deserves just so much happiness after everything he's been through, especially like just winning that court case and missing his nan's funeral, which makes me so angry for him. I'm so angry for him. And now this has come out and I just want him to, this album, I want him to just have the best, the most success with it. Do you know what I mean? Like, I feel like I know him. I feel like he's my best mate now I've listened to this. But yeah, I will see you again soon. Um, and yeah, if you if you enjoyed this, subscribe. I react to music and TV um, on here. And... Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Love you lots.